So here we are. Uh, we already completed the first mission of the career mode, and this is mission two. And as you can see here, we researched quite a new few things: a larger fuel tank, smaller fuel tank, some scientific equipment, and this important thing: the decoupler. So now we're going to create a vessel that can take an astronaut into orbit, because that is obvious, the obvious next step in uh, in the Kerbal Space Program. So we launched uh, a guy in this rocket into space, and we're now going to uh, we're now going to create a, a first stage of this rocket, uh, just like this. And we're going to launch that into space. We're going to take a few of the small fuel tanks off of this because the small ones are not really worth anything anymore now that we have this, the big can. So we're going to stick two of those up there. Put the non completely uncontrollable engine. engine. This is going to be quite, create, create quite some problems. This is not a gimbal engine, so we can't do thrust vectoring. You can't move the nozzle, so the only steering comes from the uh, SAS active uh, part in the pod up here, so this can actually only launch us straight up into space. And we're going to add to this a decoupler. So now we have a separate stage here. And we're going to move this upwards and down here under this rocket we're going to build something similar to this. Two of the big cans, actually, yes, let's go with two of them, big engine on the bottom, and we're going to hold Alt down, and we're going to click here on the top of this rocket, because this is going to create a copy of this one. We're going to press X, because we want to take this and put it into six units, and then we're going to attach these six units at a similar height of this, onto this lower stage, so boom. Now we have, firing uh, from the launch pad, five engines down here. We have the decoupler, this is the second stage here. We have the engine inside this, and we want those to fire at the same time. We then, of course, have the capsule up here, and um, some uh, parachute on the top, our scientific equipment up here, which reminds me the whole point of this mission is to take this unit into space. So we're going to attach uh, one of these. So we press Shift X to reduce this, and let's make it balanced. So we place one on either side, like so. We have two of these mystery go tanks. We have a stage here to correct us when we are getting close to orbit, and we have the lifting stage down here, it's going to lift us up. So that's pretty much it, we're going to name this the Prototype 2, we're going to save it, and I think what we're going to do is go straight onto the launch pad, you can check here, center of mass is there, center of lift is, mm, I don't know where, it doesn't want to say, but center of thrust is in the middle, so we're good to go. And this um, center of lift thing is actually because of the um, rotation of the planet Kerbal, so this is always going to be slightly offset. But as long as the um, center of thrust and the center of mass is aligned from the top, you can check it here, it's like it always stays in the middle under the center of gravity, you are pretty much flying straight. So we're going to save this, and we're going to go to a launch pad. Loading, loading, loading. We are on the launch pad out here. Uh, checks um, remain to turn on the SAS. Throttle up to a hundred percent. Check the state is correct. And so this is the Jebediah Kerman into orbit mission in ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one, liftoff of the Jebediah Kerman into orbit mission. So we're going to throw a little bit back here because this is quite aggressive power we've got on this thing at the moment. We are already up to 200, no, 160 meters per second, 70, 80. It's quite some lift we got here. Now we're approaching 200 meters per second. We don't want to go much faster than that at the moment, so we're going to throw down, down, 
down, down until we see the accelerometer here. Going slower. That, I think, is the sound of the sound barrier being broken, because we are already up to 8 kilometers. And at 10, we're going to turn again the gravity turn towards um, the 90 degrees east, falling back again, because we're still accelerating and turning to the east. Now, this is a big rocket heavy thing to turn, so this doesn't actually just turn. We are at 33% fuel at the moment. And turning off the SAS and turning it on again to lock it here. And we're going to go to press M and go to the map view and we're going to watch this and when it climbs to 70 we're going to press X to cut the engine. So waiting for 70 kilometers, slightly above that, 70 kilometers, let's go with 80 this time, cut the engines. We're going to add the apoapsis here, we're going to place a marker point, add a maneuver, we're going to add this vector. The front vector or whatever it's called, and we're going to make a nice circle here. And the minute these start to uh, ro uh, rotate around and we get the periapsis, this is the lowest point, and the apoapsis is the highest point. When this gets to over here, we know that we have um, a nice about circular um, orbit here. I'm going to decrease that slightly so that we have those at 90 degrees opposite to us. We can to turn it a little bit more to make it a nicer orbit. I'm pulling these strings on the side here. I think that is actually that is actually pretty nice orbit we got there. We're going to press M again, go back to our rocket. We're going to look for this blue marker, which is the uh, intended thrust vector for this. We're going to turn off the SAS, let the spaceship Slide towards that middle of the blue X and turn on the SS again to stabilize it. And that's pretty close. Of course we need to hit this dead center. Now, here are the controls for hitting your marks. So when you boost again, this is going to start to, to go down. Uh, what we want to do now is actually throw this stage away to ensure that it, it actually goes down and crashes into the ground. So press spacebar to go to stage, uh, this was stage 2, we'll go to stage 1. So we've released from that and we only now have this little orbiting unit here. Which is going to take us into a nice uh, stable orbit. Uh, what you can do to get a better control of this is actually go back into the map view, open this one up here. And now we can see we have 10 seconds until we need to start the burn. We're on the right course, and we still have engine controls down here on shift. And so it's actually over by 20 seconds. So we're going to have to hurry and burn some fuel. Going to correct for that bit of lateness here by a little bit over this. You can actually see now the blue ring is, is the orbit that we're taking right now. Just correct it here to stay on the center of this. And when this this is actually growing right now because we're boosting and we can cut down on throttle now. Make it grow slower. And when this is big enough and it, it, it matches the, the brownish circle here, we can press the uh, the X key to cut throttle. And that is about there, and we then have to delete this, left click it, and click the crosshairs, and then let's add a new one to kind of compensate for my stupidity in launching the engine too late. It's actually done by adding a little bit of this vector, and then ensuring that we are at the lowest point here. Yes, and let's press or let's just move the cursor down here because now we have a new thrust vector over here and now the ship is actually much easier to turn. So we're going to burn here in seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to start the burn here. I'm going to 
burn for two seconds, one, and stop the burn. Now we have this nice corrected ring here that's almost on top of the blue one, or brown one. And we're going to delete this point. So now we have a nice orbit and we are orbiting around 60 kilometers in height. So we're actually not into space right now. That's maybe a little bit of a problem. The apoapsis is um, up in 134 kilometers of height, but we're not inside the atmosphere, so we're not slowing down. We are just slightly above the atmosphere here, and now the height is starting to increase again. And we have loads of fuel left to break down the craft and slow us down again and take us out of orbit. Now we're going to accelerate time here to 2. We're going to go to map view. Watch this. Two, three, four times time acceleration. Go back to view here, the altimeter readings. And when this gets up to 70 again, we're going to open up the scientific capsule things here. And we're going to take a reading and we're going to transmit that using our antenna back to our base. Now, uh, we need to let this actually complete an entire orbit, because when this has completed an entire orbit, we will get higher points. So, at the opposite side here, the apoapsis, we're going to correct uh, and burn a little bit more fuel to correct the orbit in height. I'm sorry, I was not very good at that, uh, concentrating while I was recording here. And then we are at 70, and to slow down the speed, we're going to uh, observe mystery goo. And it says the goo seems to have clumped into a sphere. It also appears to have become brittle. Alright, we can send that back and get 40% of the 10 scientific points. So we're going to get those 40% now. That is not enough for the entire observation. We don't have that much electricity, so that didn't go. So we're going to open the other one and observe this mystery goo. And these uh, scientific value points, we're going to keep that data. We're also going to check a look at the crew report. And that only has a scientific value of 0 0.5, so we're not going to use that. Uh, we're just going to discard that and keep the goo report. So. Kerbins only, Kerbins only have um, one piece of note paper on the note, and it takes the entire note paper to write this, so, well, <laughs> strange. We're going to reset the goo canister again. Going back here to watch, and we're going to accelerate the timing. The comma and period keys, period increases it. Let's go to one and let's add a thrust vector over here. Adding a small maneuver that's going to uh, increase the uh, parapsis over here. And that will be way above the 70 kilometers, which is the height of space program and this is just a small 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 burn so we're going to keep that and we're going to accelerate time again to, until we get close to this actually you know what we're going to slow down again so we have control of the vehicle we're using a s d and w we're going to um, turn the vehicle around until we find this thrust vector directly at that. And there we go. Also updated and this is nice. You can see actually that the SAS that's it, it toggles for input so when I press a key it turns to this symbol. A circular thing like it knows I'm I want to change direction. 
So, right on top of the blue note. Accelerating time again. And this time we're going to do our burn from the uh, chase or camera view. Press M away from this. And we're going to burn in 9 seconds. Because I want to keep a look at how much fuel I've got left. So make sure we still have enough fuel to break this orbit and go back to uh, the planet to Kerbal. So, let's burn. This made the... this actually quite a lot better. Bigger. We still have enough, very, very, very much fuel left. So we now have a very much higher apoapsis over here, which is now at 600 kilometers, which is actually above what is considered deep space, which stops at 120 kilometers. So now we actually have several reports to do. We can accelerate time until we are on the big apoapsis over here. And we think we should check out the mystery crew over here again. Yes. Because we're now way much, much long, further into space. And we're going to check this again. I'm going to right click one of these canisters and observe the mystery crew. right at home here, and actually this has a value of 10, so we increased it by, I think, just 1.8 points. So we're going to keep this data, this, and we're going to go back, and we completed an entire orbit now, so we can remove this by left-clicking on it here, and clicking the delete marker. And then we want to add a vector close to the parapsis here. Something falling down, it doesn't matter. We want to add a vector here that makes us crash into the sea. So, it's a counter thrust vector. And we want to make it right about there so there's no chance of us hitting the ground this time, like I did in the first tutorial. We can actually move this and can save a little bit of fuel. This instead, because this is the more uh, the more I take to this crossing, the more we need to break. Up. So the less we need to break, the better. Let's accelerate time again. Now approaching the apoapsis and fast forward to our vector point over here. Doesn't really matter how how nicely we hit this. This is just to break up the ship. So if we just hit this approximately right, it'll be okay. Let's turn the vessel in the opposite direction. We still have 15 seconds. basically all the action it takes from this uh, point of view, and we're going to accelerate time until we exit space. We can follow that in the camera view out here. Nice little spacecraft here coming into the sun. And we're going to, like last time, turn the rear of the vessel into the direction of travel. This can only be done at one warp speed, so I have to turn back time acceleration or time warp to one again. And turn the rear end of the vessel into the direction of travel, which is of course right here. Accelerate a bit more. Going into 90 
from this night. 18, 17, and crossing into normal space. So that was going outside space now. The music, the funny music, funny space music stops. And correcting the attitude of our little rocket here. And we are ready with the last stage, which is um, actually deploying the suit. I should have maybe actually put in a decoupler up here, so we only had the space capsule to land, but since these are near empty, it won't really make that much of a matter. Actually, just to reduce this... Oh, we need to close this hatch here. Yeah. Oh, reset the goo canister. Yes. Are going to um, burn this up when we see we are not hitting any ground here. All, all ocean ahead of us here. And I'm actually going to thrust that in the opposite direction. Let's go to maximum thrust. down and all it's going to do is make us fall down even faster. You can see here that my point of burn is now set us down. Let's delete that waypoint marker. Go back into a normal camera view because now the fireworks are starting. bottom of these good canisters that can go red hot from this impact with the air slow us down from two and a half kilometers per second down to I guess it's gonna go all the way down to about five hundred seven hundred and pretty slow now six hundred and then it stops we're going to deploy our suit now and turn off the SAS. So drag suit deployed, SAS off. So this is now going to slow down the vessel. Make sure we hit the water. Let's see how many research points we get out of this one. 5,000 meters, 160 meters per second, 3,500 meters, 140 meters per second, 2,500, 130 meters per second, 2 kilometers, 124 meters per second, 100 meters altitude, 112 meters per second, and when we get to 300, the strikes will deploy. Ah, that was about 500. It deployed and slowed us right down to 11.2 meters per second, and that is not really that dangerous. This is 11.2 uh, is about 40 kilometers per hour that we're going to hit water, so that's. Um, about the same speed as um, if you take a real high jump from a one meter um, um, board in a, s in, in, in a swimming uh, arena. So a little splash and we're done. 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, and so we go up. And here's our little capsule. And again, we're going to press the uh, escape button. We're going to go back to the space center. It says I'm throttled up, but yeah, I don't have any throttle on this, so I'll leave anyway. And we're going to go back to this uh, the tracking station. And we're going to find our little. It says Prota 2 is still flying. Why does it do this? Uh, we just 
had prototype two crash into the ocean over here. Um, because we are still throttled up, I think what's going on is I can't really count for this. So this takes us back to the last autosave point, which is not what we wanted. So we're going to take control of this again. Yes, the nice spacecraft. And did we do this before the last save? Do this right at home here. We're going to take that data. We're going to go back. We're going to do this once more. Time accelerate this to a thousand. Let's do some orbits. One hundred. And a thousand. And it turns back to one hundred. And let's slow it down here to one. And let's make this less crash. Add a maneuver. That takes us into the ocean over here. Yes, a little bit more power. It takes us into the ocean out here. Yes. So, yes, that's definitely going to make us hit the ocean. Going to go back here. We now have one minute to turn the vessel around and find this vector first thingy. Triangular guy. So this is actually good. We can see this just just the second time what I'm doing here. So using A, S, D, and W to control the craft. Turn it towards that blue dot again. And we're waiting for the time accelerating here. We accelerate a bit forward until we hit 30 seconds. We're going to look down here. 10 seconds. And we're going to do this from the map view again to ensure that we have the right uh, altitude. This is thrusting down. And let's not use full throttle here because it makes it hard to actually hit our marks. Yes. Wait until it hits down here. So uh, close. Close must hit here, and this line must hit here. And we use X. Cut the throttle right there. So that's maneuver done successfully. And we want to delete this and we're gonna accelerate time until we start re-entering the atmosphere. goes down to time warp 1 again. And let's turn this baby around. <laughs> and we are over the water now. So let's do what we did last time and use um, our throttle here to break up even more. short way of travel down here. It's not going to take many seconds for us. We're actually pretty close to entering the atmosphere now. Falling steeply this time. Gebedai came and smiling and looking very happy. I guess he's got his reasons too. Let's face the rear of the craft into the direction of travel. And we're now in surface altitude. Changes down here. So we should start to enter the burning part of the atmosphere right about now. Yes, the red glow is coming. from hitting 
hitting the air with uh, many, 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 many kilometers per hour. Actually, from from Earth looking upward, this I think this would look sort of like a comet entering <laughs> into the atmosphere, like a small shooting star. So here we are inside the atmosphere, and we're going to use the last stage here, pushing space to deploy the drag uh, parachute. And again, it's slowing us down. Turn off the SAS to make the drag suit control the direction that we're pointing. And we're going to wait until the vessel slows down and hits water. And then this time we're going to throttle it down like said we should. So throttle into zero, pressing X to cut the throttle. I'm waiting for this to hit water surface. And it's coming down nicely. And at 500 meters, as we saw last time, the parachute is going to deploy. Poof. And all we have to do is set in wait. Watch this actually pressing C. You can see what Jebediah sees from inside the vessel. When he hits the ground, you can see here, he has all the instruments. This is um, in the middle. The yeah, black thing, clock thing. Small hand is um, the 100 meters. Uh, the middle hand is uh, 1000 meters, and the big hand is 10,000 meters. So in, in the middle here, he has the uh, surface speed in relation. So this is hitting water now. Pulse. And that's how it looks from inside the capsule when you hit water. And I guess mission is done. So let's go back to the space center. And like I said before, let's go to the tracking station. Here. And at the tracking station, we're going to click the prototype 2 and we're going to recover that. Recover. Oh, look at all the nice research points. Mystery, observation, while in space, high over Kerbin. So, 10 points for that. Mystery, observation, while in space, over Kerbin. 4 for that. Recovery of vessel returning from Kerbin orbit. 10 science points. So, 38 science points all in all. Let's click done to that. Let's go back and see what we can use our science points for at the research center. Research center, we have this research part, which is going to give us some survivability. It's going to add a small uh, liquid fueled engine here, which is uh, nice for, for putting on landing crafts. So this is uh, most uh, certainly this is aimed at making landers uh, that can land both on, on the planet Earth again when you're going back and land on other planets like Moon. Um, this is a stability program and this adds the um, rail decoupler, uh, a winglet which is not much use at the moment and a nose cone which is just for aerodynamics. <laughs> And what is really interesting is this part up here, because that adds the liquid fuel engine with thrust vectoring. So in the um, big middle box here, at the bottom, it says uh, thrust vectoring enabled, vectoring range 1.0. Uh, and that's important, because that means this engine can be used to steer the rocket. So what we want to ensure is that we get these parts. Now we have an engine we can actually control, this will make uh, on the spacecraft much easier to control. We still have 18 points, which is enough to uh, give us this part, which has the uh, rail decoupler, which makes it possible to build uh, rockets in uh, stages and throw off um, other rockets. So this is good for attaching solid booster rockets to, uh, to spaceships, which is actually pretty nice. Uh, and it's uh, 18 science points, and that's what we have, 18 science points. And this one down here is 15 science points, but we can actually not... At the moment, these parts are not really usable for us, so we want to go ahead and research this one. 
Okay, so now we got new parts to build with for the third mission of uh, this career mode. So, um, this was it for this mission. Uh, thank you for watching.